That's the paradox of Nikola Tesla. Was he a dreamer cursed to live in the wrong century? He dreamed of a world where power could be sent through the air, where machines could run without wires, and where humanity might tap into forces of nature we still don't fully understand. Once a failed dream is being preserved as a tribute to his vision, while others took credit for his ideas. That's the mystery of Tesla, the genius who lit the world but never got to see his own future come true. And his story starts in the most electrifying way possible. What if I told you the man who shaped the way we use electricity today died broke, alone, and ignored by the very world he tried to illuminate? Nikola Tesla's story isn't just about brilliant inventions. It's about obsession, betrayal, and ideas so far ahead of their time that many still sound like science fiction. He dreamed of a world where power could be sent through the air, where machines could run without wires, and where humanity might tap into forces of nature we still don't fully understand. But how did a man with such extraordinary vision end up forgotten in a New York hotel room, while others took credit for his ideas? That's the mystery of Tesla, the genius who lit the world but never got to see his own future come true. And his story starts in the most electrifying way possible, with a lightning storm. Nikola Tesla entered the world during a thunderstorm on July 10, 1856, in a small village called Smiljan, in what is now Croatia. Local folklore even claimed that the midwife warned his mother, he'll be a child of darkness, as lightning split the sky. His mother countered, no, he will be a child of light. It's the kind of story that feels like destiny. Tesla grew up in a household shaped by two very different forces. His father, a Serbian Orthodox priest, wanted him to follow the path of religion and philosophy. But his mother, though never formally educated, was an inventor in her own right. She built tools to make household work easier, and Tesla always said his creativity came from her. From the beginning, he wasn't like other children. He had an eidetic memory, capable of recalling entire books and blueprints in perfect detail. Teachers accused him of cheating because he could solve complex math problems entirely in his head. By the time he was a student at the Technical University of Graz, Tesla was already thinking about electricity in ways no one else dared to. It was there, staring at a primitive generator, that he first imagined an alternating current motor, a spark of inspiration that would one day change the world. But destiny wouldn't let him take a straight path. His journey toward electrifying the world would bring him face to face with one of the most powerful inventors in history, and it would ignite a rivalry that became legendary. In 1884, Nikola Tesla arrived in New York City with just a few cents in his pocket and a head full of ideas. The streets buzzed with opportunity, and Tesla carried a letter of introduction to the most famous inventor of the age, Thomas Edison. For a brief moment, it seemed like destiny had paired two geniuses who would light up the world together. But what started as collaboration quickly turned into conflict. Tesla joined Edison's company, working tirelessly to improve Edison's direct current generators. According to Tesla, Edison even promised him a staggering $50,000 if he could find a solution. Tesla delivered, but when he asked for payment, Edison reportedly laughed and said, you don't understand our American humor. Instead, Edison offered him a small raise of just $8 a week. Insulted, Tesla walked out. That resignation marked the beginning of one of the most famous battles in history, the War of the Currents. Edison was the champion of direct current, or DC, a system that required expensive wiring and could only travel short distances. Tesla, on the other hand, believed in alternating current, or AC. Unlike DC, AC could be transmitted over miles with far less loss of power, and it had the potential to power entire cities. The fight turned ugly. Edison launched a smear campaign against AC, calling it dangerous and even sponsoring public demonstrations where animals were electrocuted with alternating current to scare the public. 
Newspapers carried sensational headlines about Tesla's deadly system. But Tesla was undeterred. He knew AC was the future. And soon, he would find an ally powerful enough to prove it to the world. Just when it seemed Edison might crush Tesla's vision, another figure stepped onto the stage. George Westinghouse, a brilliant industrialist who recognized the power of Tesla's AC system. In 1888, Westinghouse struck a deal with Tesla, purchasing his patents and giving him royalties that, at least for a while, secured Tesla's financial future. Together they set out to prove AC could do what Edison swore was impossible, safely bring light and power across vast distances. Their big chance came in 1893 at the World's Columbian Exposition in Chicago. While Edison's DC system had failed to win the contract, Tesla and Westinghouse won the bid. Millions of visitors walked the fairgrounds in awe as Tesla's alternating current lit up the night, powering thousands of bulbs with a brilliance that stunned the world. It wasn't just spectacle, it was a turning point. Two years later, Tesla's system would harness one of nature's greatest forces, Niagara Falls. In 1895, the first major hydroelectric power plant using Tesla's AC system roared to life, sending electricity miles away to the city of Buffalo. For the first time, people saw that nature itself could be tamed to power modern life. Tesla had won the War of the Currents. Edison's DC was finished, and AC became the standard we still use today. But while this was his greatest triumph, Tesla wasn't interested in resting on victory. His imagination was already racing towards something even bigger, an audacious dream of wireless power that would either secure his place as the greatest inventor of all time or drive him to ruin. With the war of the currents behind him, Tesla turned his focus to something even more ambitious, wireless power not just sending messages without wires, but electricity itself, broadcast through the air, across oceans and continents. If he could succeed, the world might never need fuel, wires, or utility bills again. This dream became Wardenclyffe Tower. Backed by financier J.P. Morgan, Tesla began constructing a massive tower on Long Island in the early 1900s. To the public, it was a global communications project, but Tesla's true vision went further. He wanted to beam free energy around the globe. The idea was staggering and also threatening. When Morgan realized Tesla's system couldn't be easily metered or monetized, the money dried up. The unfinished tower loomed over the landscape until it was finally dismantled during World War I. What could have been Tesla's greatest legacy was reduced to rubble, a symbol of his grand but unfulfilled ambitions. Still, the vision of wireless power wasn't just fantasy. Tesla had already demonstrated smaller-scale wireless lighting, and he believed his principles would one day change the world. Instead of recognition, though, his failure at Wardenclyffe fueled a darker narrative. That Tesla was not a visionary, but a mad scientist chasing impossible dreams. And as that reputation spread, another battle was brewing one that would determine who truly invented the technology that shaped the modern age, radio. For years, the world credited Guglielmo Marconi as the father of radio. He even received a Nobel Prize in 1909. But buried in patent filings was a different story, one that pointed straight back to Nikola Tesla. As early as 1896, Tesla had filed patents describing the basic components of radio transmission, tuned circuits, transmitters, and receivers. He even conducted live demonstrations of wireless signals, convinced he was on the edge of a breakthrough. But when Marconi came along, backed by powerful investors and friends like Edison, history started bending in his favor. At first, the U.S. Patent Office rejected Marconi's claims, citing Tesla's prior work. But in 1904, under heavy influence, the decision was reversed, and Marconi's patents were approved. Tesla was pushed aside, his rightful place in history stolen, while Marconi basked in the spotlight. 
Tesla tried to fight back in court, but his lawsuits went nowhere. It wasn't until 1943, months after Tesla's death, that the U.S. Supreme Court quietly overturned Marconi's key patents, finally recognizing Tesla's earlier contributions. By then, the man who had envisioned wireless communication was gone, and his vindication came too late for him to witness. But instead of enjoying justice, Tesla's later years were overshadowed by strange claims, eccentric habits, and stories that would fuel the legend of the mad scientist. And this next chapter of his life only deepened the mystery of who he really was. As Tesla grew older, his genius became harder for the public to separate from his eccentricities. He lived alone in New York hotels, often leaving behind unpaid bills. He obsessed over the number three, washed compulsively, and claimed to communicate with pigeons, especially a single white pigeon he said he loved as much as any human. These quirks made headlines, painting him as an odd recluse rather than a respected inventor. But beneath the strange stories, Tesla was still experimenting with ideas decades ahead of his time. He explored X-rays before Wilhelm Röntgen's discovery. He sketched out early concepts of radar and even described technology that resembles today's drones. Then there were the sensational claims. On his birthdays, Tesla would hold press conferences where he promised inventions that sounded like something out of science fiction a death ray capable of ending all wars, a motor powered by cosmic rays, and even a method of recording human thought. To some, these announcements confirmed his brilliance. To others, they were proof he had lost touch with reality. Governments quietly investigated his teleforce weapon, but no working prototype ever emerged. Instead, Tesla's reputation slipped further into the realm of rumor and myth, and the line between fact and fiction blurred. And while he was dismissed as a fading eccentric, his final years would be defined not by recognition, but by solitude and tragedy. On January 7, 1943, Nikola Tesla died alone in room 3327 of the New Yorker Hotel. He was 86 years old, penniless, and largely forgotten by the public. The man who had electrified the world passed away in obscurity, his notes and belongings quickly seized by government officials who feared his ideas might fall into enemy hands during World War II. For years, whispers spread about what secrets those papers contained, blueprints for weapons, or perhaps discoveries still beyond our understanding. But while Tesla's final years were tragic, his story didn't end there. Slowly, the world began to rediscover him. In 1960, the unit of magnetic flux density was officially named the Tesla. In the decades that followed, his reputation shifted from eccentric to visionary. Today, his name is attached to one of the most innovative car companies in the world, a symbol of how far-reaching his influence truly was. His birthplace has become a museum, and Wardenclyffe Tower, once a failed dream, is being preserved as a tribute to his vision. More importantly, the very ideas he was mocked for, wireless communication, renewable energy, even remote-controlled machines are now cornerstones of modern life. He dreamed of a future where technology connected humanity, and in many ways that future is here. Tesla's life leaves us with a haunting question. Was he simply too far ahead of his time? Or did the world fail to recognize a genius whose mind could have reshaped civilization even more than it already has? Nikola Tesla's story is one of brilliance, heartbreak, and visions that stretched beyond the limits of his era. He gave us the alternating current that powers our homes, the foundation for radio, and ideas that foreshadowed wireless communication, radar, and even renewable energy. Yet he died nearly forgotten, labeled eccentric rather than celebrated as the prophet of the modern age. Today, when you flip on a light, charge your phone, or stream a signal through the air, you're living inside Tesla's imagination. His genius was both a gift and a burden, soaring beyond what others could see, 
but leaving him isolated in the process. And that's the paradox of Nikola Tesla. Was he a dreamer cursed to live in the wrong century? Or a visionary who, piece by piece, built the world we now take for granted? One thing is certain, his legacy endures, humming through every wire, glowing in every bulb, and sparking in every idea that dares to push beyond the possible. The man who lit the world may have left it in darkness, but his current still flows through all of us. And that's why Nikola Tesla is larger than life history.